Good morning. Good Sunday morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here in Jacksonville, y'all. Now, it's cold, okay? It's cold, but on top of it being Sunday, it is also Christmas Day, okay? Merry Christmas to everyone that sees this video. Merry Christmas to you. Now, I'm starting, and actually, it's a little bit late. I did a couple of things last night. I'm not trying to stress myself out. We're not having a whole bunch of company today. Okay, so I'm fixing a few things. Um, I said I wasn't going to do a capon again for Christmas, but I, I am. Okay, because I didn't get any of the last capon for Thanksgiving. So I'm making one today. I'm making a standing rib roast. Okay, I got my meat on for my collards. They've been cleaned, uh, cut up, and blanched. So all I have to do is pull those out of the freezer and drop them in this meat. I've cooked string beans last night in uh, with some turkey tails. All I have to do is heat that up. My dressing is in the fridge. It's been mixed up. Uh, I'm just going to touch it up this morning, throw it in the oven, okay? We're having candy ears, we're having squash casserole, we're having mac and cheese, and we are having the slow cooker sweet and sour meatballs, okay? Yes, and of course some cornbread and rice, and if I left anything out, you'll see it in the video, okay? Yes, um... Merry Christmas, y'all. Now, you may not see this video um, until late this evening or sometime after Christmas, but still, Merry Christmas. I hope you and your family had a good one, okay? But right now, let's get started on this Christmas Sunday's meal, okay? All right, y'all, that's our capon. It's not a large one. I didn't even look at the pounds of it, but they don't come that big anyway, okay? They don't come as big as turkeys, and I know we just I just showed you one for Thanksgiving, okay? But I want you to see everything I'm making. This is going in the oven. It's been see clean, seasoned. It sat overnight, of course, with the mayonnaise on it, okay? I just sprinkled a little bit of um, flour on it. I have onions and celery in here okay i'm gonna cover this i'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 and let it cook for about two and a half hours or so okay all right y'all i'm going to get my candy yams together because my potatoes are done okay and i just uh, peeled and boiled some potatoes and cut them up and as you can see they are cooked cooked a little bit too much but it's okay y'all I tell you all the time I like my candy am soft okay and I'm just gonna take and if you notice I already have sugar and some cinnamon at the bottom of this pan okay I got it at the bottom And it doesn't matter that they're laying on top of each other. All right, and it's not many. I didn't make many because we have sweet potato pies for dessert. But I like candy yams with my meal. Do y'all like candy yams with your meal? Most meats I like to eat candy yams with, and that's why I fix them a lot on Sundays. Now you might say, why won't you layer the sugar? You don't need to. It's going to get down in here. Trust and believe. Okay, so that's, that's my sweet potatoes. All right. So now what I do, in this cup right here, I have probably a half a teaspoon of vanilla. I got a little bit of coconut extract and I got a little bit of lemon, okay? All three of these. I put them in this cup and what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of cold water to it. Just a little bit. See that? That's it. And I'm going to take and I'm going to pour it onto my, and that's my way of stretching my extract, okay? Because I don't like to just pour them straight on here. 
Some will get it, some won't. It's, it's, it's just, it's not even. Okay, and to me, you just kind of waste your extract. Okay, so you mix it with a little water. Goes a long ways, okay? All right, that's that. This is my garbage over here, y'all. Okay, so now I will take and I will add more sugar. Hope I got enough in here, y'all, without having to open up another one here. And you, and you put as much sugar as you want. Okay, my candy yams, I like them sweet. You don't want to use as much sugar, you don't have to. You know, all of our taste buds are different. But if I'm going to eat these, I want sweet candied yams. Yes. Mm, 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 mm. And that, now this sugar is going to melt and it's going to get on all of these sweet potatoes. Okay, it's going to get on all of them. Stop telling me it's too much sugar. Stop telling me. There we go. Clean that out. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to add some. Let's put our nutmeg. I just put a little bit of nutmeg, okay? Again, use as much as you want. I don't use a lot of nutmeg in anything, okay? And I'm going to put a little bit more cinnamon. It would be nice if these jars come with a lid with holes, but they don't. I've kind of learned how to sprinkle it out without sprinkling too much. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Now, I like cinnamon, y'all. Okay. That's it. The only thing we're going to do now for these yams is put some butter. Not margarine, butter. Let me grab some butter. And a knife. And we're just going to cut up little pieces of butter all over this. So when it starts to melt, mm, 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 mm. y'all. Candy yams can be this simple. Okay? Don't have to make it complicated. Hate it. But you gotta have the butter, y'all. Gotta have the butter. Now these will go into the oven when I'm ready to put them in there. I don't think I'm quite ready yet. These will go in the oven at 350. In fact, everything I think I'm cooking two days, cook cooking at 350. Okay. And they'll cook, I guess, about 45 minutes to an hour. I let them cook a while. All right. So I'm going to cover them up for now. And then they'll be going in the oven. All right, y'all. This is our standing rib roast. Okay. This is just about eight pounds. All right, so all I've done is put it in my, I rinsed it off really good. I put it in my pan. Look at that beautiful rib roast. Um, I put some onions and celery in it, okay, just, just for the aromatics. And I'm going to also add some fresh thyme, of course. I wanted you to see, now I have six large cloves of garlic. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom, but there's six cloves of garlic. And then I put a whole gob of sea salt. I don't have kosher salt as far as I know. Um, but I use the sea salt because it is a, um, a large uh, ground of salt, okay? That much in there. And then I'm going to use my heavy, uh, this pepper here. It's a, it's a larger grind of pepper, okay? So I'm going to put quite a bit of that. But I wanted you to see the salt... Okay, and right now I'm just going to take and I'm going to put quite a bit, I want y'all to see here, quite a bit of pepper in here. Okay, see that big gob of pepper I put in there? And then I'm going to take and I'm going to add some olive oil to it. Okay, add a good bit of that because we're going to take this, this paste 
is what it's actually going to come out to be. And we're going to put it all over this piece of standing rib roast. And it probably would show better if I had it in a different kind of um, pan. But this is the one I'm cooking it in, y'all. Okay. I need a little bit more um, olive oil. I'm going to make that quite wet. And we only eat one of these probably once a year. If I don't get it in for Christmas, I try to get it in for New Year's. We, we, we just like them. They're, they're superb. Okay. All right. So I've mixed the, the garlic, all of that salt, and the black pepper. All right. And I'm going to take and I'm just going to lay it. You know what? I should have probably put some oil on my meat. Wasn't thinking, y'all. It's all right. It's all right. Okay, just, just to help this lay here. And what this does, it makes a crust on your meat. And you can just take it off if, you know, because this salt has got to get through to this meat. That's why it's so much. Okay. It's got to get through. You can take this crust off. All right, is that a beautiful piece of meat or what, y'all? Mmm. Yes. I'm gonna put some down on the sides. I didn't want to put it in an oversized roaster. All right. I'm gonna put this in the oven, uncovered for about 20 minutes on a high temperature, okay? We're gonna start it at 450 for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna set my timer. And then I'm going to cover it and cook it at 350, okay? And this is a big piece of meat. It's gonna cook a couple of hours, maybe two two and a half hours we don't we, i mean we, we like it kind of medium uh medium well that is okay and i know they say you're supposed to eat it you know with i we like a little pink but um we like to cook a little bit more than medium rare all right so that's that that's going in that beautiful piece of meat y'all is that gorgeous or what Okay, we like to just kind of switch it up. All right. And it's not going to go in right now. I'm kind of timing everything. That's what I do when I cook. I'm actually keeping a log today. Sometimes I don't stress myself out. But today I got a log of everything that's going in the oven because I know how long everything should cook. Okay, this will go in. Let's see. It's. 10 o'clock now to go in at 11. Hey, y'all, I'm back with my dressing that I made up. Now, I had already made a pan up out of this to send out of the house, okay? So you can see I don't have much in here. Can y'all see down in that pot? I don't have much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some crumbs. But we're going to stretch this, okay? And if you all saw my uh, dressing video, you know what's in here. The foundation is in here, my vegetables, my meat, um, my cornbread, stuffing crumbs, and I probably could use some more. Cause see, see all that meat in there? I got plenty of room here to stretch this and not lose the taste because I'm getting ready to add some more taste in it. Okay, I got some better than bouillon there. What I did was I took it out the jar because, you know, it was it's in the fridge, so it gets cold and hard. So I 
heat it up just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot of that better than bouillon because it's salty, y'all. It can make your food salty. Okay, so there we go. I added in a half a bag of, of my crumbs because I'm trying to get two pans out of here. Let's go ahead on and put in our better than bouillon. I softened it up. And that's quite a bit, y'all. But I just added, and I had not, I had not put the better than bu bouillon in here. I had not. I forgot. So I said, well, I can just add it when I get ready to mix it up for it to go into the oven. Okay. I also have a stick of butter. Okay. Didn't melt melt, but it melt enough for me to be able to mix this up. Of course, we're going to add some more liquid. Now, let me tell you, if you've added what you think is enough broth and you taste it and it tastes really, really good. At that point, if you need more liquid, you can add water. Telling y'all what I know. At that point, even right now, if I wanted to add water, I could for my liquid. Because I am going to need more liquid in here. But what I'm going to do real quick is taste this to see where I am with the seasonings. Okay. Let's here before I put my eggs in y'all we're gonna go ahead on and taste this mm. yes it is good it is good I'm gonna put a little water in here but I'm also going to add some poultry seasoning because yesterday when I took some out of here and I'm gonna show you the consistency I'm looking for y'all Yesterday when I took some out of here, I did add poultry seasoning to it. See here, where's my poultry seasoning? It's right here. I can taste it, but I want just a little bit more, y'all, poultry. Okay? We're going to add our eggs to this, and then we're going to be good. Right. You see, it's still thick, but don't worry about it. Let's go ahead on and add some eggs. In here, I'll probably add about four eggs. Let's hope they're good because I'm not doing it in a separate dish. And that's just for the consistency of it. Okay. Let's, let's see here. We got three of them in here. I can still use a little liquid. It's still just a little bit too thick. But the taste of this, y'all. Mm, 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 mm. Put that one last egg in. That fourth egg. Because I'm going to add some liquid. And dressing is something, you know, you, you, you get the foundation of it. But it's something you just have to taste and play with. Until you get it where you want it. As long as you have the main ingredients in here. Okay? That's how our grandmothers and mothers did. It, it, there was no recipe. You started with something, you taste it, and, and you worked with it as you went along. Now 
that's more of the consistency that I want. Okay, and I'm just stirring now to be sure that I get those eggs blended in here well. Let me take it on. I got it here. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my... Now remember, I haven't put in my drippings from my K-Pon. That, that it's not done. Normally, I would have had that K-Pon done early. But I got a late start. I'm just been taking my time, y'all. Like I said, trying not to stress myself out. Okay? Dinner will be done when it's done. Our goal is, or my goal is 2 o'clock for dinner, okay? So anyway, I'm going to wait till the, um, I'm going to go ahead on and put, in, put this in pans now. I'm using this size pan. And hopefully... I have enough for this size pan. I usually make two pans. I'm not making seafood dressing today. Um, they're just going to have to live without it today. This is the better one anyway. <laughs> you know, us older folks like the regular dressing. My nieces and my kids and grandkids, all of them, they love the seafood dressing. But we like the traditional, look at that beautiful dressing, y'all. And I think I'm going to thin it out even more. But isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to get this in these pans. As soon as my uh, cake pond is close to done, I'm going to take some of those drippings out and, and put it in the pan and mix it up while, while it's in the pan. And then it'll be going into the oven. Hey, y'all, I'm back. And what I'm making now, and I know I just showed this on a video, but and I'm not going to walk you through the process, okay? But I am making a squash casserole. And what I did last night is I cooked, uh, cooked these vegetables, okay? Now, you can see I already have cheese in the bottom. I shredded it up already. All right, y'all? I'm moving now, y'all. So, I'm going to take this squash. I have green, uh, I have uh, zucchini squash. And I have yellow squash, okay? You can see the water that still came off of that squash after I drained it last night. But I sauteed it just so I could get it out of the way. I wouldn't have to do it today and do just what I'm doing now. And that's put it together and throw it in the oven, y'all. Told y'all, this is my oldest daughter's, like, one of her favorite dishes. So... Okay, so that's all of my squash. Okay. And then I have that, you know that uh, I have two eggs in here, cream cheese, mayonnaise, and sour cream. Okay, I've already mixed it together. I'll go ahead on and pour it in here. Now I haven't shredded my cheese for the top yet, but I will. Because I also have to shred the cheese for my macaroni. So I'm getting ready to be shredding a whole lot of cheese here. Okay, and we're going to take, you know what, I want some black pepper in that. Let's get this mixed up. Okay. If you don't want the black pepper, you don't have to put Put it in. I sauteed my vegetables with seasoning, with a uh, little salt, little all-purpose. Ooh, y'all, that's that's looking good already, y'all. Oh, yes, looking good already. And the only thing now that I have to put in here is my crackers. I have them right here. Okay. And you can you can put crackers on the top if you'd like, maybe some crackers and butter. And I did saute these vegetables in butter, okay? So it's got plenty of butter in them. But if you want to put some type of crackers on the top, 
um, rather than the cheese, you can do that. We like the cheese on top. That was almost the whole sleeve, but not quite. About three fourths of it. Let's see where we are here. Let's get all this mixed up. Make sure we get all that cheese from the bottom. See there? Let's get it all. And use you can use any kind of cheese you want. Okay, I'm using the same cheese that I'm using in my macaroni. That's what I have here. And that's, uh, I bought some Munster, of course. I had some Monterey Jack. That's a piece of cheese there. I asked the young lady to cut my Munster really thick, and she did not. And it was kind of hard to shred, so I just sliced it up. Okay, y'all. I'm going to put some shredded cheese on the top of this. And I'll show you when it comes out of the oven. All right, y'all, I am back with that macaroni. And as you can see, I've shredded up some cheese. Okay, but rather than mix this macaroni in this dish, because I normally use a, you've seen me use my roaster that I put my macaroni in and it's deep. This is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour these noodles right back into this hot pot. Oh, 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 lost one, yeah, I lost one. It's all right, I get it. Okay, let me get that up because I don't want to step in it. Winding down, y'all, winding down here. Okay, let's see. All right, and in these hot noodles, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put in a whole stick of butter. I think a whole stick of butter, let's do. This is a half. Okay, and we'll just transfer that cheese into the pot. No big deal, I'm gonna put another half, so that's a stick of butter. I salted my noodles when I cooked them, y'all. Remember, over salt them, and you won't need any more salt. Okay. I'm gonna get that butter. I should have cut that butter up, huh? It's all good. It's all good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead on and put my cheese in. I need to try to cut that butter up, y'all. It's probably hot now. Y'all winding down? Well, by the time you see this, you will have eaten your dinner, I suppose. I don't know where the other, here it is. Okay, I'm just cutting up this butter. I should have known better than to just throw it in there. Start winding down, getting into that Russian stage. Hmm. Okay. So that's not enough. It'll melt. These noodles are hot. I'm going to put some hot pepper in here. Hot pepper. Black pepper, y'all. Black pe pepper. Okay. And that's really all I put in here. Sometimes I might put a little paprika. But really, black pepper is it because I've salted my noodles. I don't. I don't go for all of the, you know, the onion and all. I don't do all of that in my macaroni and cheese. I've never eaten it that way. Might be good, don't know. But I'm not going to mess up my cheese to find out. So I'm going to take this cheese, y'all, and I'm going to take and put it over in here because what I want it to do is start melting in these hot noodles okay i'm sorry about the phone y'all i'm sorry about the phone pick it up okay there might be a little bit left in the bo bottom and it doesn't matter because the, the noodles are going back in all right okay so i have here 
two eggs. Okay, not making a rule with the cheese sauce, okay? So I'm gonna put my eggs in here. Cheese wanna stick together, it's all good. Okay, I have two eggs back here. To those eggs, I'm going to add some sour cream. I'm gonna beat these two eggs. See these two eggs here, y'all? I'm gonna go ahead on and beat them up. Y'all, I think after this, I might be done. I just need to stick stuff into the oven. But I may be done. Okay, so that's my two eggs. I'm going to add some sour cream to those eggs. Because this combination is going into my macaroni and cheese. Okay, you know what? Let's put it all in there because... And my cheese, let me tell you what kind of cheese I had. I don't know if I already told you, but I had Monterey Jack. I, don't, um, I had sharp ch cheddar, extra sharp cheddar, and some Munster. And also, I mixed in uh, some Velveeta, good size piece, okay? I used what I had left in there. So now I have used the cheese. I'm beating this. Okay, just beating it a little bit. Mix those eggs up in there. I'm gonna take and pour some milk in here. I have some half and half. I'm gonna use some of that. And you just wanna add enough milk to get it to the consistency that you want it. I'm using up milk in my house, y'all. I've had this milk here a minute. I'm going to use that. That's whole milk. Of course, you can use all whole milk. You can use all half and half, okay? I'm just mixing up stuff because I want to get rid of stuff. And now I'm going to pour that concoction. Uh, we're going to keep this here because I know I'm going to need more milk. Take it and I'm mixing that up. Hope y'all can see in this pot here. And it's not enough milk. I can see that already. A lot of noodles in here and cheese. Okay, so we're going to add some milk. I'm going to add, uh, let's see, the rest of this half and half. That's gone. And I'll put a little bit of the 2%. I keep all kind of milk in here, y'all. But then it comes a time when it's just sitting there. All right. Now. That looks sufficient. I want y'all to get in here so y'all can see here. Okay. That looks sufficient as far as the liquid is concerned. And don't worry, this cheese is going to melt, y'all. It's going to melt. And it's going to be good. Got that sour cream in there. this off of here and now what I'm going to do is just take and pour this back into my dish put some cheese on top what cheese I have left here some some cheese that I shredded I had left so now we're going to pour this back into this dish Hopefully with no issues. <clears throat> okay. Let's pour it in. Let's see, can we get them all in here? I want them all in here. Let's see what we got here, y'all. Let's 
see what we got. We're kind of pushing it, huh? Yeah, there's plenty of liquid in there. Plenty, plenty. Let's see, the thing is, y'all, I want my cheese out of here. <laughs> want my cheese. You just messed up my clothes. We can't, we can't waste cheese. Mm-mm. Okay, y'all. Never done it this way here. Always use my roaster. Okay. And now what I do, get this off my clothes, is just put some more of this cheese. And it's got liquid in it, y'all. Don't worry about it. It's got liquid in it. Okay? It's not going to be dry. I know that's what you're thinking, but it's not. Okay. Put that cheese on top. And you know when cheese sits, when you shred it yourself, it starts to stick together. That's that good cheese. Mm-hmm. It's that good cheese. All right. This will go into the oven. All right. And when it comes out, I'll be back to show you. Hey, y'all, I'm back. I wanted to show you that macaroni and cheese, that squash casserole, that beautiful capon. Look at the color on that capon, y'all. It is gorgeous, and it is going to be good. It is tender, and it is... All right, y'all, our collard greens. Our string beans, I cooked those last night. I'm just heating them up. I have some rice here. Meatballs, sweet and sour. Slow cook of meatballs, y'all. Our cornbread dressing, and y'all, this, this dressing is it's everything okay it is everything this is one pan hey y'all i'm back i'm back with my plate yes i don't have everything on my plate y'all i couldn't get it all on here Mm-hmm. we got green i got some string beans some fresh string beans i cooked last night uh-huh i have my candy yam squash casserole there's that bomb dressing. I mean, it's good, y'all. I got to get some cranberry sauce. And what you see here is some chitlins that I had for Thanksgiving. I froze them and heated them up. Yes, yes, yes. And they're still good, of course. Mmm. I didn't have space for everything. But what I want to say, y'all. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have had a good Christmas and a lot of food to eat, okay? Y'all remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not, okay? I'm going to be back real soon with another video. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.